For measuring resistance with the digital voltmeter, you will set the dial to the ohms, the resistance range. The ohm sim symbol signifies that. And for general purpose use, you will usually start with the 200 scale uh, setting and, and then work your way up as needed. Um, so to test, to kind of calibrate your meter, you'll first just short the leads together and pinch them together as hard as you can. And you should, on these Harbor Freight meters, you typically can get it down to around, uh, see the battery's getting low on this, around 0.6 volts or uh, 0.6 ohms. I've usually gotten it down to 0.5, 0.4-ish, and that is quote unquote zero. Um, but there's a give or take range there. Uh, what it's doing basically, there's a nine volt battery inside the meter and it is running nine volts through the wire and gauging how much current flows and, um, and using that to determine what kind of resistance is in line. Um, so with the resistance of these wires and the connections and everything, it is saying that, you know, it's the, our zero that we'll use is the lowest reading we can get when we go to the 200 scale and put the leads together. So right now, it's looking like 0.8 or so, 0.7. As the longer you hold it, the lower it should get um, to a point. So about 0.7 is our zero. If I use this resistor, this is just one resistor out of a bulk pack and go just from one end of the resistor to the other. It says about 10 and a half, but remember um, about 0.7 was our lowest. So give or take, it's a roughly 10 amp or a 10 ohm resistor. And that is correct with the, the stripes code that's on there, um, 10 ohm resistor. I'll use our variable resistor we, was use, we were using earlier. It says on the back it's a 25 ohm variable resistor, which is a potentiometer, is the other term for that, potentiometer. Um, so, and, and it, the points connect to the middle and one of the sides. Um, either way, either way, and it depends on which, which way you want the dial to go. So we'll connect it there, still staying on the 200 range because 25 is within 200. So connect that together and I'm gonna try to hold it with one hand so I can work the dial with the other hand, which might be interesting. Okay, there we go. So right now, we're apparently we're at the max settings. It's saying 26.2 and then I'll dial it back and there it says 0.7. So there were zero here, because remember that's our zero reference. And then as we dial it up, we get more and more and more resistance up to, so 26.5, that's about our zero reference though. So roughly 26, give or take, ohms. Um, so that's how to measure resistance. For greater resistances, just keep increasing the range here up to the 2000 K. In the case here, if I'm measuring, let's go back to this 10 ohm resistor over here. All right, so on that 10 ohm resistor, if I increase it to the 2000 scale, see it rounds it. Now it says it's about 13, but there's no decimal position like there is here. So that's just, it's just a scale of um, how many zeros or how many decimal points you want. 2000, it says about 12, it's just rounding it. Now it's gonna round it more severely. Um, and it's, it's 0 0.002 in the 20,000 ohm scale. So that's just how that works. And then once you get to a point, it will show nothing because compared to that huge of a resistance amount, this is nothing, this is zero. So now I'm going to show you how to use a multimeter to measure voltage. Now one quick note is that you never want to have the meter set to the ohms or the resistance measuring uh, section and then connect it to a battery because that is like connecting one battery um, straight across to another battery, um, which depending on how you hook it up could be a, a could become a bad thing. 
uh, because when you're checking resistance, that is using a 9 volt battery inside the meter and, and uh, connecting it through the leads to whatever you're testing, say a resistor, that's going to measure an actual current flow through that system. But if you are connecting it to a battery, it's trying to, to actually flow electricity through a battery, which is not what you want to do. So um, you can possibly damage the meter or other things if you have the, uh, the meter set to the ohms setting, but you're really trying to measure voltage and you're connecting across a battery. So that's very important. Basically what you do is, connect, is uh, select the voltage range that you want to measure. Um, you want it to be um, at or above the voltage you're wanting to measure. So this is a 12 volt lead acid battery. So 12 volts, the next, next highest um, selection I see here is 20, so that's the one I would use. 20 is the most common you'll use if you're doing automotive work because you're working with 12 volt batteries generally. So um, you just select that voltage range and then put the negative and positive um, leads on here. That battery is, it's actually a, a very good charge on there. It's measuring 13.13 basically. And you can see what happens if I, if I hold these on here and then I switch this to the next higher setting, it's just less decimal points and it rounds it it rounds it a little bit and then go higher it still just says 13. It also says high voltage just warning you that if you're really measuring something in the thousand volt range you want to be careful because um, that could be some dangerous voltage you're working with. So um, so that's it and then if you go under that it's gonna say overload because there is a higher voltage that you're trying to measure than what they can represent using that setting. So it lets you know that you need to turn it up a notch or two. So that's um, checking that. I'm gonna check this little um, alkaline one and a half volt battery that's actually very charged. It's 1.63. Here's a low battery, uh, 0.86, that's quite dead. Um, and then there's one more setting on here. It's called the battery check or battery tester setting and it says 1.5 volt It applies what it does is it applies. It's it's like Internally in the in the meter it is applying a resistor across The terminals of the battery so it's putting a load on it and making it work kind of like putting it across the light bulb It's making that battery work and then it's also checking um, it's, it, it'll tell you of that 4 milliamp that it, it will try to flow through this battery or from this battery, it will tell you how much of that 4 milliamps it is able to actually get. So this using this low, I'm going to use the high battery first, the charged battery on that setting. So it says 4.4, so that's a very good battery because it's trying to do, to do four milliamps out of a good battery, it did 4.4, so that battery is good. Um, very highly charged. This low battery, of that four milliamps, it's only getting 2.3. So that's obviously, you know, roughly halfway in the range of four to zero. And um, again, check, that correlates with the voltage, the open circuit voltage um, of 0.8 out of 1.5, 1 1.6. So that's just a handy feature. There's also a 9 volt setting for a 9 volt battery and it would apply a 20, it would uh, uh, look for a 25 milliamp current draw for that. To demonstrate measuring current or amperage with a digital multimeter, I have set it to the 10 amp 10 amp range here. You could go in the DC amps range here. Um, there is no AC amperage range because it's it would be too much for the meter, um, or at least they didn't allow it in this version of it. So DC amps, but you can see it's only micro and milliamps, so very small amounts of current. To demonstrate this, I'm going to go the 10 amp scale. So instead of going here, which I would be for small currents. 
I'm gonna go here in the 10 amp range and there's a fused connection in there. It says 10 amps max. There's a fuse inside that if you exceed 10 amps, it'll blow that fuse and protect this, the uh, circuitry or supposedly. Um, so uh, 10 amp scale, I put an adjustable uh, resistor here so that I can dial it in and show you the amperage flow, how much current will flow through the circuit through that load plus this load. Um, and this goes from zero to up to 25 ohms. It says on the back, 25 ohms. Um, so we will connect it and see how much current is going to flow. First, I'm gonna put this back on DC or on uh, 10 amps. So connect it. And as you can see, the light bulb is barely glowing. There's just enough circuit flow, um, current flow, to allow that filament to glow slightly at about 0.41 amps DC. I'm going to put an aluminum block under the resistor um, to help it stay cool, to help wick some heat away from it. So as I, um, so in other words, this is taking the brunt of the load. This is the, the brunt of the load right now. This is uh, resisting a lot of current. And I can actually feel it starting to warm up right now, which is why I put the aluminum block under it to keep it cool. If you run it too hot, then just like any component, it will burn out and not work anymore. So I'm gonna slowly dial this up and you'll see the current is increasing as I'm making this less and less of a resistance and the light bulb is glowing more and more and more as more and more current flows through the circuit. So here we're at 0.62 amps and we're glowing brighter and brighter. This is resisting less and less. And there I have zeroed out the resistor. So now this is no resistance practically. We're flowing the full current that that light bulb will allow and it's 0.93 ish amps DC and then we'll dial it back down to 0.4